Welcome to today's live stream. Today we're going to be going through Network Plus Lab number two, where we're using tools like Wireshark to capture some network traffic. So let's go ahead and get started here. Okay, so here we have our instructions, capture network traffic. We're going to scan a target server using to uh, determine the types of network traffic to intercept. And we use TCP dump. And I think we're just using maybe TCP dump, probably Wireshark too. I'm going to open up Wireshark as well just to show you a little extra. Right here we have DC10 Domain Controller 10. And we have a few different devices that make the environment work. And then we have a Kali Linux box. This is primarily what we're going to be using. Now remember whenever you're logging into your Kali box you can't use the, the typing assist here. So you're going to have to type this in manually. And that password is always going to be that PA dollar sign dollar sign W0RD. Remember that's a zero, not a O. I believe. Yeah. Okay. So let's go ahead and, and start with our objectives here. Uh, we're gonna have to display open ports on the LAMP 10 server. Okay. LAMP is an acronym, it stands for Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. Okay. So either, these are common server types. So we're going to log in and then we're going to create, uh, we're going to open up a terminal on our Kali Linux machine. I'm going to go ahead and log into DC 10 now. I like to log into all the resources before I get started with the lab just because it flows a little better. Again, if you have any questions, uh, leave a comment or email info at cybercrafttraining.com. I'd be happy to help. Okay, so let's go ahead, go to Kali. I'll up a terminal. We're going to type in 10.1.16.12. Oh yeah, we need to also, now we're scanning that and we're receiving some information here. And we got port 22, that's SSH, 80 is HTTP, unsecure. Uh, Port 111, this is for RPC mine, and port 5000 for UPN. All right, so definitely remember SSH and HTTP. Now, I also want to output this information to a text file. So to do that, I'm going to use that right caret and name that file nmap.txt. So it's going to do those scan the scan there and then it's going to output the results of that scan to that text file. Now let's go ahead and make sure that text file exists and it does. So we did that correctly. Okay. Now we also have, you now we can open up, we'll use Wireshark a little later. Okay, uh, so we can always remember the cat command. You definitely want to know this command for the exam, cat nmap.txt. It's going to display the results of that, that text file, basically the same thing that we displayed here. So it's just, we're doing extra steps just to practice with that, that cat file or the cat command. Now we scanned LAMP 10, that's what this IP address was, 10.1.16.12. We discovered uh, which of the following types could you attempt to intercept. Uh, so I mean, we could try SSH, but remember SSH is encrypted. So we can try SSH. I mean, I think HTTP would be a good, uh, a good, you know, target here. I, I guess we could put SSH and that is what it's asking for here. Again, you'd probably want to target unencrypted web traffic. And if you're, you have unencrypted web traffic, then you know that's going to be sent over plain text. So that's pretty, pretty helpful to understand. And here's a port review sheet. So if you're looking for this, just some common ports and protocols. We have ports protocols on Cybercraft's website for Network Plus and for the common certification. So if you're looking for a cheat sheet, I recommend you go here. It's going to be a lot better uh, than this one. These are just some common ports. 
And the ones we looked at here were SSH or SFTP at 22 and then 80 for HTTP. Okay. Okay, so let's go ahead and capture some HTTP traffic. All right. We're gonna open up terminal. We could do this a couple different ways. We can open up Firefox, but we're gonna open up terminal and we're gonna go Firefox 10.1.16.12. So we're telling Firefox to connect to this address. It should open up Firefox for us. And this is the, the IP address, the website for this uh, server, the LAMP server, okay? So we have Apache 2 Ubuntu default page. That comes up there. And we can do a couple different ways. I like to just open up a new window or we can do this and we can just click the terminal button here or we can select file and a new tab if we want to do tabs. I like to open up in a new window. So go ahead and do that. And as long as you're getting the results for the lab, please, when you do these labs, work outside of the boundaries. I know we're mostly following what they ask here, but if you want to play around with the settings and do different commands, definitely do so. It will definitely help you out. So we're going to do sudo super user do tcp dump. And we're going to put on some flags here, dash I, dash, uh, the interface is going to be F0. And then we're going to make it a very verbose output. Destination is going to be 10.1.16.12. That's the DST. And we're going to focus on port HTTP. So it's going to be port 80. And then we're going to put, we're going to output this, these results to http.txt. And then we're going to have to type in the super user do password, which is going to be the password that we use to log on to our Kali box. Remember when you type in that password, it's not going to show up. No characters are going to show up. So don't be confused by that. So TCP dump is going to be listening now to that destination. Now we need to prompt this, we need to have some sort of packets to capture. We can do the same thing with Wireshark here. Let's go ahead and uh, do a capture. We can do F0, we can do basically the same settings we had here, okay? And we can capture from F0. So let's go ahead and open up. So we've started our Wireshark capture. Let's go ahead and refresh this page. It's not a lot on this page. It doesn't take very long to refresh. But that should give us a result here in two places. One, here we see a connection request to that website. 10.1.16.12. You see TCP packets being sent in Wireshark. And then in here, in TCP dump, we have 15 packets that we've received because I refreshed that page a couple of times. All right. Now we can go, once this open up a new, uh, we're going to keep these listeners open, these packet captures open. And then we're going to do some more commands. Wget 10.1.16.12 slash index.html. We're navigating to the index page, okay? And we have that correct. Basically, we're downloading that index file. All right, so let's go ahead and close our Firefox browser window. And then we're gonna go to our terminal command. It's still listening. We're gonna hit Control C to stop it. Let's do the same thing with Wireshark. Let's go ahead and hit the stop button to stop Wireshark. And then we can see some of these commands here. See, we have another TCP connection request right here. Let me make this a little bigger. And you're gonna see we sent a SYN packet, we got a SYNAC, and we sent back an ACK packet. 
Okay, so that's the TCP handshake process visualized through Wireshark. Pretty nifty. You can see the packet itself down here. You can see information about that packet, uh, what type of protocol it's using, the source port, destination port, and this is all over port 80. You know, there's an HTTP connection. Uh, any timestamps we have on here, all sorts of information. It's a little outside the scope of this lab, but I do want to show you some extra stuff. All right, so here we have our TCP dump. Okay, now remember we output this to a text file, so let's go ahead and find that text file cat http.txt. Okay, and here we are displaying the results of that pa capture packet or packet capture. Okay, so let's see, is that what we're asking us to do? Uh, yeah, we could also use the ls command, it's asking us to use the ls command to display the directory and then find uh, where that cat where that file is but we just use the cat command we're going to score make sure we have that http file I mean we're looking at it so we do okay and then here we can do this in a different way too sudo tcp dump dash r HTTP dot txt. Now, one of the ways we've done this is just through the cat command. You know, we already have root access. Um, the other way here is we're going through TCP dump. Okay. But let's go ahead and take a look at some of these packets here. What do we have? We have the host here. We understand that. The agent is Mozilla, Firefox. Okay. We have some different packets. Let's see if we can see. It's asking us for uh, S, E, Q, and ACK messages. Now we've already kind of cheated. We've looked at um, Wireshark. But let's take a look here. And did this ever finish? I have too many terminals up here. Uh, here we go. Okay. So here's our our reading of that HTTP text file through TCP dump. Now it's going to make a lot more sense reading it through TCP dump because it's a TCP dump output. So if we just use the cat command, we're going to get this back here. Okay. Some of this is encoded. Okay. So it's not being recognized very well. But if we read it through TCP dump, we're going to see this in all those, the encoding is going to be read and outputted in a way we can read by TCP dump. So let's take a look here. We should see here we have some ACK. Okay, so we do have ACK. Now let's look for SEQ. And there we have SEQ. Okay. So we have both of those. So this output is what you can expect. And that's why we want to read it from that TCP dump. Just two different ways of reading that output. You're not, you're going to be getting a much cleaner interface here. Okay, uh, and we've talked about what the ACK message is. We can also filter these if we like using this command here. We're, we're not going to do that right now. Now, ACK and SEQ, okay, those are going to be TCP oriented messages. Okay, where we have SYN, SYNACK, and ACK for the handshake process, and then SEQ or the those are also associated with TCP. Okay, now it's asking us here to also do Wireshark. Uh, we've already opened Wireshark, so we kind of skipped ahead. Let's have let's open our Wireshark window. Now, what we can do is we can open that HTTP file, the HTTP.txt. Okay, if we want, uh, but. We've already al we've already captured this stuff through Wireshark, so we don't necessarily have to do that. Okay, now you can browse here, find where you have your your different uh, files if you like. But we're not we don't have to do that since we've already did the all the um, capture the packet capture through Wireshark itself. 
Okay, so we're just going to skip that step. All right, so we're going to go ahead and scroll through the output. And we're trying to find a get command for the Ubuntu logo. Now we can do a search here. That's a display filter. You have display filters so we can um, search for like different protocols. We want to just look at CCP packets. Or we can do like strings of characters. Here we go. So we just did, we changed this search to a string. Okay, and then we see here, get the icon Ubuntu logo. logo. That's an HTTP request, okay? So what is the result of HTTP get command in this example? Uh, and this is basically, we're downloading a PNG image. And if we look here, we should see information about that and right here. It's being downloaded from icon slash Ubuntu logo dot PNG. So that's a PNG file that was downloaded. And right here, it shows you right there where that is. So this is a packet that's designed to get that image. Now, will the results of HTTP GET command be displayed in the Wireshark output? Yes, because HTTP is not encrypted. Absolutely. Okay, wonderful. All right, so now we can do a, uh, we're going to look for SSH commands. So let's go ahead. Let's close out some of these. We don't necessarily need these anymore. Again, we can recall any of this information. I'm going to keep the Wireshark in uh, Wireshark window open and I'm going to keep our TCP dump output open of the HTTP.txt file. But let's open up a new terminal. I'm going to go sudo TCP dump interface F0 very verbose output destination 10.1.16. Is that again? Yeah, 12. Still targeting that LAMP server. And we're going to look at the port SSH. Output this to ssh.txt. Okay, got a new password. I think I misspelled the password. If you misspell the password, oh no. I have an int syntax there. So something's misspelled here. Oh, I have an extra space between W. I commonly misspell these commands. So if you do, don't worry. <laughs> Happens to everybody. Okay, now we already input the password, so we didn't have to do that again, even though we messed up the command. Uh, it'll authentic authenticate you first and then it'll read the command, so that's kind of nice. So if you do misspell something, you have to put the command in every time, which is a nice design feature. So now it's listening on F0. Okay, and then what we could do is open up a new terminal, and we can establish an SSH command, command or an SSH session to lamp at 10.1.16.1. Yes, we want to continue connecting and we need to put in the password, which is again is the same password for all of these labs. Okay, now we've connected through SSH connection. We can see you know, how much memory is being used here. Uh, and SSH can be used for lots of different things. It can be used for uh, remote services. You can transfer files, all sorts of things. Usually it's used for remote services or remote administration, but so we've established our SSH connection. And again, this is a shell command, so we can, we can put uh, commands in here now as if we're going to be, you know, we're configuring or we're using this as a local user, essentially. So we can look, say, who am I? We are the user lamp here on the lamp, okay? And we could even type host name, lamp 10, okay? So we're, we are the user LAMP on the remote server LAMP 10. Uh, so this would be 
this command prompts should be lamp at lamp 10 all right so we can disconnect this now again we've established this connection all we are doing is for this connection is establishing it so that we can then uh, read that connection on our TCP note so we are listening on TCP dump. Okay, we're going to stop that. Control C, remember. Okay, and then we're going to do our command to recall that text file through uh, TCP dump ssh.txt. It's going to read. We've already done our pseudo password, so we don't need to do it again for this terminal. It's going to read that. It's going to take a moment. And then we're going to be able to see, first off, that this file exists. We've done that already. And then we're, while it's reading that, we're going to go ahead and open that in um, Wireshark as well. So let's go ahead and find this. Okay, so here's our TCP dump that we have here. We got that correctly. Now, if we were to open this in Wireshark, we can do that. Um, remember, SSH has a secure connection. Okay, that means it's encrypted. All right. So, do we expect the Who Am I command to be displayed in Wireshark? Now, right here, we see. A lot of traffic. It's not really telling us specifics. Okay. So we can expect to say no SSH is encrypted. All right. So we know that SSH is encrypted traffic. HTTP is unencrypted. That's why we're able to see details of the packets through. Um, if we look at our other TCP dump, these are details of the packets, right? Here, all we're seeing are a series of SSH connections much different, right? Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and leave those open. And we can also capture some ping traffic here. Let's go ahead and start a wire capture. And then open up a new terminal. And we're going to do same command sudo tcp dump interface f0 very verbose output icmp output ping.txt. Great. All right, now we have established another TCP session. We're going to do a ping. Okay, we're ping that LAMP server, ping, dash C, 5, 10-1.16.12. Basically, the dash C is going to limit this ping to five separate probes. Okay, so we've done five probes here, 64 bytes. If we go ahead and look at our Wireshark capture, now we see ICMP pings, okay, and we see source, destination, we see 10 entries because there are five pings, the source and the destination. Okay, so we see the request and the reply. And we could sort that by destination to see that a little clearer. Okay, and then we could also do that, uh, halt the, the TCP dump, control C. And then we can do our same command. Should be pretty good at this right now, so really nice to keep practicing these commands because by now it should be second nature ping.txt I forgot sudo
All right, and we're going to read that TCP dump output. And we're going to ensure that that ping.txt file exists. All right, so again, we just did the capture here. We don't need to open this through Wireshark. Again, if you want to open it through Wireshark, just go File, uh, Open. You can't do that while you're capturing live. So we have most of our ICMP pings here, and those are in a light pink color. Pretty stylish. Were 10, why are 10 packets displayed? 10 packets are displayed because each ping consists of two packets request and reply. Okay. Closing Wireshark. All right, so now this is basically what you're gonna be using as a network professional if you wanna listen in on connections or establish you can use this to diagnose network health, determine if a connection is going through correctly. Uh, if you see any unencrypted traffic that you don't want, you can address that and maybe shift that to an encrypted channel. Maybe you want all communication to be over HTTPS. You can use Wireshark to discover that there's some unencrypted traffic over port 80, HTTP. These can be very useful network diagnostic tools. So let's go ahead and do some comprehensive questions here. Why isn't a ping port displayed as open on the LAMP server? Why isn't a ping port um, displayed as open on the LAMP server? Ping ports are closed on web service to prevent DDoS attacks. Ping ports are always open and so automatically not displayed. Ping uses ICMP, which does not operate the transport layer where port numbers exist. Ping, port, ping ports are displayed. Okay, so ping is an ICMP uh, function. Okay, so let, let's take a look back at Wireshark here. Okay, so this is going to be operating at a different layer of the OSI model. Okay, you can ping any type of port here. Okay, well, you can ping any type of device. It's a different, um, it doesn't use a port. So just keep that in mind. Okay, and once you, you know, when you study ICMP, you'll, you'll learn that. That should be in your readings. All right, which is the default port number for SSH and HTTP? Remember, these are the ones we did in the first part of the section. SSH is 22, HTTP is 80, okay? Uh, SSH is 22, HTTP is 80. Now, I don't know why they have TCP here. It's kind of extraneous. That's uh, true, but all of them are TCP, so it doesn't really add anything to the question. All right, could you have still intercepted HTTPS traffic? Yes, you could intercept it, but you can't read it because it's encrypted. You can still intercept the packets. The packets are still being sent over the network. The contents of the packet are scrambled. They're encrypted in some way. So you could still capture those packets. And Theoretically, if you had the right computer technology, you could decrypt those packets, but you'd have to be decrypting AES, Advanced Encryption Standard. Uh, that's the current level of transport layer security that we're using to encrypt HTTP traffic. So unless you have a quantum computer or a whole warehouse full of GPUs, it's going to be pretty difficult. But it is possible. All right, so let's go ahead and grade our lab. And, you know, I think we did a pretty good job here. Let's go ahead and submit that for grading. Again, if you have any questions or you didn't understand anything, any portions of the lab, uh, just leave a comment or you know, email info at cybercrafttraining.com. And here we got everything correct. We did a super good job, so I'm gonna give myself a gold star, get my stickers here. But if you're, I hope this was helpful and uh, I appreciate you joining in. If you're looking for Network Plus training, Please go to cybercrafttraining.com. We have a link in the description for Network Plus Boot Camp. We guarantee a first time pass on any of our boot camps. And we're going to give you access to this whole Learn Lab environment for Network Plus. So if you're looking for uh, performance based questions, labs, lessons, all of this is available for you. So you can learn this information and ace your exam on the first try. But I hope this is helpful. If you have any questions, again, leave a comment or a chat.